Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the story of a processor that you may have never have heard of, the i3-2105. Now chances are you've heard of the i3-2100, a dual core Sandy Bridge CPU that launched back in 2011. Now in the same year, AMD were planning on launching their first in a long lineup of APUs, starting with the A83850. Now AMD's APUs, as you probably know by now, are CPUs that feature onboard Radeon HD graphics and were designed with the budget gamer in mind. We could put together a system on the cheap and we would be able to play our favourite games, albeit at reduced settings, without the need for a discrete GPU and powerful power supply. Now in the weeks before, the aforementioned A83850 APU from AMD, Intel decided that they were going to try and disrupt the launch of said APU, or at least try to. I don't know if that's actually the case, but I like to think of it like that, as it makes this story a little bit more interesting. Now, there's always been a healthy competition between Intel and AMD, and it's something that makes the processor market great. I'm always looking forward to seeing what comes out next. And that's where the i3-2105 comes in. It features exactly the same specs as the i3-2100, the same core count, the same thread count, the same clock speed, and the same TDP, but there is one thing it does differently to the i3-2100, and that is that it features HD 3000 graphics as opposed to 2000 graphics. You see, what I think Intel were hoping to achieve with this launch was to be able to outperform the integrated graphics that were to be found on the A83850 that would go on to release at a very similar price to what this would cost. The i3-2105 actually launched in the weeks before the A8 from AMD, so Intel had to wait and see as to whether or not they had done enough integrated graphics wise to outperform the A8-3850 when it came to running the latest games. Now these HD 3000 graphics were also at the time only found on Intel's more expensive chips, so to bring them to a more entry level offering definitely showed signs that they were planning to compete with the launch of AMD's APU, but was it enough to therefore outperform the A8 gameplay wise and graphics wise when it eventually launched just a few weeks later? Well, let's talk about that. So as we move on to CPU-based benchmarks, it's clear to see that the two i3s are predictably pretty much identical. The A83850 will pull ahead in something like the Cinebench multi-test because of the two extra physical cores, but will be weaker in terms of single core performance. It's evident when we look at a real-world Premiere Pro rendering test that the i3s are both faster, but again, demonstrate no real differences in comparison to each other. That means that if you wanted an entry-level i3 at the time and planned to use it with a separate graphics card, there would be no point in going for the slightly more expensive i3-2105 as opposed to the 2100. So it's clear Intel may have hoped the differences would lie in the upgraded integrated GPU. And what's more, they may have also hoped this would mean the i3-2105 would persuade any would-be A8-3850 buyers to go with or stick with Team Blue, especially as it launched at one US dollar less than AMD's APU. So, was the upgraded iGPU enough to transform the cheapest i3 on the market's gaming performance? Well, in pretty much every game I tested that would run, the Intel HD 3000 graphics offered no significant advantage over the HD 2000 GPU on this processor. The AMD A8, on the other hand, with its onboard 6550D GPU powered ahead. This makes the i3-2105 seem like even more of a silly release, because not only does it offer no performance difference CPU-wise, but games are still not really any more playable on it than they are on the i3-2100, and if you wanted an integrated graphics-only PC at the time for some very light gaming, the A8 would have been the better choice. Does this mean then that the 2105 didn't need to exist? Well, let's recap. Both this and the i3-2100 are identical CPU performance-wise, so there would have been no need to opt for the 2105 if you planned on using a discrete graphics card, as I mentioned before. Furthermore, the improved onboard graphics, while they do offer a few more frames, don't really bridge the gap between unplayable and playable, though anyone at the time looking to build a cheap light gaming PC without a graphics card may have been tempted by the slight improvements. In that case though, it would have been best to go with the A83850, which offered significantly more graphical power. 
So I'll leave it there and let you decide whether the world needed the 2105 when we already had the pretty amazing and budget orientated 2100. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.